Camaro here. It's uh, it's an 85, 86 Camaro. It's got this uh, 305 small block in here with a T5. It's world class T5 actually. It's got a 411 rear end in it, a posi rear end. So it's going to be a heck of a combo if we can get it running right. But uh, we were just trying to get it working right here. Uh, the carburetor on it was a 750 uh, CFM Edelbrock. And I actually swapped them out because I had a, the 600 sitting on my big block, uh, 454. So we switched around there. So I got that sitting on my Chevy uh, big block. And he's got the 600 Summit sitting here. So I uh, haven't really tuned it yet for this car, but we got the idle mixture set on it. And it seems to be working all right. But where we left it off last time was what we uh, had a little bit of lifter noise coming. So we just took the valve covers off here. So we're going to reset the valve lash on it. Um, this engine has been fired and the, the initial cam break-in was completed, but uh, that's about it. So uh, I'm going to reset the valve lash, double check, make sure that the, we don't have a cam lobe that's been wiped down, and uh, kind of just go from there. It seemed like we were also having a, a vacuum leak, so got this uh, carb spacer slash gasket that comes with the Summit carburetor. So we're going to throw that on there and see where we can get at from that. So. Hopefully it's just a simple vacuum leak maybe coming from under the carburetor and then once we get the valve lash settled out we'll start her up, see what we got going on and hopefully it's just going to fire off and run right but we'll see how it goes. So what we're doing right now, we're turning over the, the crank, you know normally you just use the harmonic balancer, uh, the pulley bolt there um, and you can turn over the engine with that with the ratchet. Um, our issue was we started tightening it up and it kept tightening and the engine wasn't turning over like oh I thought it should have been tight but anyways what was happening is what the old old uh, owner had done was he put a lock washer on the harmonic balancer so basically what we were doing is the bolt head was just tightening through the lock washer and not doing anything so we just took the lock washer off tried to put the bolt on the bolt was too long so Took that back off, had searched for a little bit, found a couple washers to stick back on there, but now we should be back in business, be able to turn the engine over and try to keep going with that valve lash adjustment. Okay, so what we're doing now is while we were checking the valve lash, we ended up finding a loose uh, header bolt, and the guy who put this together, he used a, uh, a hex head or allen head bolt for the header bolt, so here we are. We're fighting it can't really get in there that well but um, with our allen wrench tightening down the header bolts because they're all loose and we know we did have an exhaust leak and well this is probably where it's coming from so so what we're doing how we do this here is basically what we're doing taking the, the rocker arm and just loosening up the, the nut on them and then what we're doing here is we're doing the turn technique on the push rod so basically you just turn the push rod as you're tightening up that rocker arm nut until you can feel the resistance like from so that the, when the rocker arm tightens down the push rod you can feel it and that's what you call zero lash right there and since this is a hydraulic lifter cam what we're going to do now is add a half turn or two quarter turns so in this situation we don't have enough room to get a full half turn in on that uh on that nut there but we have enough we can just do two quarter turns and that's a, a half turn of the, the that nut there puts out about 20 thousandths of preload, which is where you want to be on a hydraulic lifter cam. You have 20 to 60 thousandths of preload is what they say. So if you put it at 20 thousand uh, 20 thousandths of an inch preload, then you're going to have a lot less wear on your lifters that'll last longer for you. So we're just going back through and resetting these. We found some of them that were just incredibly tight and some of them that were really loose. So I'm not sure what the guy was doing when he said it, but so far it seems like all the the uh, lobes are firing, all the lifters are firing. So I don't think the camshaft was worn out. I think this guy who had the car before just didn't have it set quite right or wasn't quite sure what he was doing when he was setting these. So we're just going back through and double checking everything now. So hopefully this will uh, turn out for us and we'll see how, how it goes. Okay. So how we're doing this is basically we're watching the valves and so when one cam lobe is on the full lift for the same cylinder, the opposite uh, cam lobe should not be on a lift cycle. So 
what we're doing with this one is on cylinder four here, uh, what we're looking at is the intake lifter is pushing right now. And this is the worst one we found when I said that we had some that were loose, some that were tight. And this one, we haven't touched this one yet. And this is just like, it's like I just loosened it up to get ready to tighten it. Um, but we haven't touched that one yet. That's the four exhaust. So we did have a lifter clatter and that is a significant source of it right there. But this one, one of the worst I've seen. But I mean, the when we checked it coming around, the number four exhaust lifter did push, so we didn't wipe that cam lobe. Um, so we set the intake, we were able to set the intake on it. So now we're gonna set the exhaust and that's our last one to check. So uh, after this, we should be about good to go. So today we're working on that Camaro that's sitting right over there. Uh, we got a, an engine sitting on the back of the trailer, but uh, basically this is a junkyard 350 motor that we've stuck out of like a 94 Chevy pickup. And we're just gonna do a quick little redneck rebuild on it. Just put in all new seals. We're gonna lap the valves and put in new valve stem seals and just kind of go through the whole motor to make sure it's not gonna leak not going to be anything spectacular as far as performance because we're not changing anything but shouldn't leak and it should run that was the goal um, for it so I'm just going to go over quick how I'm going to take these valves off um, just real quick I don't know if somebody else hold the camera here basically you just take your valve spring compressor stick it right over the top Now I already went through and I took a socket and you put it over top of the, right on the uh, retain, retainer right here and just give it a quick tap with the hammer, nothing too hard or anything, but that way this will pop off. Because if you don't, then these kind of get seated in there and they get stuck. So once you have that down, then there's two little retaining clips there. You take those off and those can go right into the cleaner. Which I haven't done yet. Any of these. And for this one, I'm thinking just because it's it's got 130,000 miles on it, these are just sticking. So I'm just taking a rubber mallet and just kind of lightly tapping it, and then she pops. And set that down. And then this is the exhaust valve. There's two different types of valve stem seals here. This is the exhaust one, and this here is the intake. But once you get that off, there's this little O-ring right here. This is the best one I've seen on this engine. It's not even broken. I'm gonna have to break it to get it off. There it goes. But this is coming apart on every single one of these valves. It's broken off. And then you can take these seals off. These are junk. We got new ones. I'm still keeping them here. When you pull the valve out, that's all there is to it. So you just do that on all of them, and then we're getting it all cleaned up so that there's no, you know, get all this carbon build up off of there. We, this is a TBI motor, so they run rich, so you'll have a lot of carbon everywhere. But 
carbon isn't the worst thing in the world. It's just, it means that your motor probably is pretty good uh, internally wise. So it's not running lean or anything that way. So you know that. But we're going to keep cleaning it up and try to get these heads put back together and maybe slap back on the motor yet tonight. Yeah.